On this edition of the Coach Dable Show, presented by Ford. If you get behind the chains against this team, this is another team that can hurt you with, you know, a four-man rush with those front four spots. It's a foot race, and you're never going to catch him because he's lightning fast. All right, we're in the Christmas spirit here. I'm going to go ho, 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 over. I'm going to take the over on the two and a half sacks. My goal is to, to be legendary. Welcome you to another edition of the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. I'm Bob Papa. Merry Christmas to you and your family. I'm joined as always by two-time Super Bowl champion Carl Banks and the head coach of the New York Giants, Brian Dable. And coach, obviously the game on Sunday against uh, New Orleans, tough sledding. They did a really good job up front to limit your run game and never let you get into any kind of rhythm. Yeah, they did a they did a good job in that. And then they did a good job of getting us behind the sticks and, and really playing the game. Um, the way we didn't want to play it, which was a bunch of third and longs. Um, thus, we were two of 16. I think we had 12 third and nine pluses. Uh, definitely not a way that you, you want to play the game. Coach, you'll look at this and you'll say, well, there were some drive starters that you could have taken advantage of and just some missed opportunities and just some more of an opportunity to teach. But you can look at it two ways, right? You can say, well, they did a good job. Or you can say, hey, we can do a better job at some of the things we had opportunities to do absolutely never make excuses combination of both um, you know had some opportunities to get some first downs on some easy slants um, you know missed a go route did it you know protect it I'd say you know, not as well as we needed to protect that game and um, you know all that factors into where we were at the end of the game you were able to get Darren Waller back in the lineup after a long period of time he had a big 29 yard catch on a third and 12. how important is it to get him more incorporated into what you're doing right now and get him back up to speed sure. yeah he was on a pitch count much like I'd say Dexter um, in the previous two weeks so we had to really do a good job of balancing the plays that we used him on to try to get him through the game and, and make sure that he was healthy for the next week um, certainly helped us in, in, in that area and continue him, hopefully give him a little bit more reps this week if, he, if he's able to do it. Coach, one of the things uh, this week you'll be taking on the Eagles on Christmas afternoon down in Philadelphia. Obviously, you haven't seen him yet this year. You play him twice in the last three weeks, but it seems to me that one of the things that they're very, when they're really purring offensively is their ability to run inside in, in tight spaces. How, what makes it so effective what they do? Yeah, they stay on track and play the game that, the way they need to play it, early downs. Uh, get the ball to their playmakers, you know, AJ and Smitty, and obviously Jalen drives it, drives the the offense here. He's, you know, look at his record from high school to college to pros; it's a, a pretty significant winning percentage. How much pressure does that put on a team? Uh, they only need nine yards basically to get a first down because they're so good with that play. Um, so you got to, you, if if it's third and one or fourth and one, it's almost like a fait accompli with their success rate. Yeah, they're unbelievable at it, and, and trust me, every team in the league studies it, uh, but they, they've done a really good job of executing that play at a high, high level. Because their defensive front four can individually put pressure on. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the necessity to make sure that everybody communicates and stays on the same page? Yeah, no question, and, and make sure you understand where your help's at. So if they are running games, that we have an extra player there for them. Um, running backs chipping on the way through the line of scrimmage but uh, again if you get behind the chains against this team this is another team that can hurt you with you know a four-man rush with the, the the presence that they have you know in those front four spots uh, obviously last week you played in a dome this week you're going to be playing on christmas in philadelphia a different kind of hostile crowd isn't it yeah no it's uh you know they're they're certainly rowdy there um and they love their eagles and and rightfully so they got uh, I'd say a, a rabid fan base, and you know, it's certainly when you're there, you can you can feel the energy from from their fans. Coach, we appreciate a couple of minutes. Best of luck this week. Thanks, Thanks guys. Coach. Appreciate it. That's the head coach of the New York Giants, Brian Dable. When we come back, our player interview and much more. Just getting started here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Ford. You you tried to hit me, and I went nowhere. It was like this. <laughs> aren't you aren't you supposed to be strong? Game day. Let's get it. That's 
Spencer Lawrence is one of the best nose tackles in the NFL. And just watch the pressure and the way he collapses the pocket. Hey, you got that ready? <laughs> Woo, come on, throw it, man. You didn't think I was that fast, huh? Here you go. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. Time for this week's player interview. Dex, how you doing, man? Good, you? I'm good, I'm good. Um, there's a few questions I have, but tell me, the first one I have is, how has teams now started to play you? Um, you had your partner in crime, Leonard Williams, mm -hmm. for a while, and now he's gone. And people, not that they didn't know how really good you are, but are you getting more attention now? Uh, yeah, a lot more. <laughs> um, you kind of feel it through the games. Like, they slide in a lot of things to me or, you know, holding me with a center so the guard can come or holding me a guard so the center can reach. Um, little things like that um, that, you know, it's all part of the game. Coach Dre kind of prepared me for it, um, telling me, like, you know, once you start getting your name out there, like you, teams are going to try to play you different to try to control you. So the next question then is, the word was that you were going to be oh, yeah. this type of player, and then did you disappoint them and they went back to their team oh, no. and said, no, nah, this guy ain't all that? <laughs> no, I, I don't try to disappoint. <laughs> Dominance. Um, there are games where you just take over. And do you, do you have that feeling when you know you got a guy? Have you ever... And, I don't want to say, because this is kind of a new era, but we used to say, I made my guy quit. Have you ever had that? Have you ever, have you had to make yeah. your guy quit? Yeah, I think I felt that a couple of times. Yeah, where well, uh, guys, you just knew, whatever, yeah. he's gone. He's not going to Yeah, quit. and I kind of tell him to. Yeah, <laughs> so your trash talk is top shelf. I did not know until they had you mic'd up how much trash you talk. Yeah. Is that somebody has to do something first, or you just from, from uh, the door? I think from the door, it starts, you know, little subtle things, but then if they do something, it, it ramps up a little more. The season hasn't gone um, as anyone expected it to. What is the leadership now for you when a season is not going well? How does that, how is your leadership? Uh, honestly, I think it's, it's easy for guys to, you know, quit around this time, you know, like, you know, we keep losing, you know, playoff hopes not that big, but as a leader, I think it's, important for us to remember we still creating a culture if anything and I try to lead by the way I play you know I know you know a lot of guys think about their contract next year things like that but you got to control what you can control on the field is the message that I try to put out there and whatever you do on that field is going to dictate your future in the in the long run so at the end of the day we still got to prepare each game and go out there and play our best. Is it fun playing for Wink Martindale in this defense? Does he does he give you guys a lot of different things that you're like, yeah, I'm, I love I love this game plan this week. Yeah, he, yeah, he definitely switches it up a lot. Um, and I just say it's like even collective. You know, Coach Dre helps a lot mm -hmm. um, with, in the D line room. At, you know, teaching us how to, you know, something that uh, scheme that Wink drew up. You know, teaching us how to be productive in that type of scheme mm -hmm. or in that position that we're in. So I think it's like the collective with between those two that really, you know, helping us play well up front. Nacho and Aishan, they seem to have gotten better each week and um, you're starting to see a lot more uh, complimentary plays from those guys. Are you helping them or they're just feeding off of you? I think we feed off each other, to be honest. Um, Obviously, I'll give my nuances, you know, they're older than me. They're, mm -hmm. like, played about three, four years more than me, so I'm learning from them as well, too. Um, I think it's, that's a, I think it's why it looks like it's no really drop-off because, like, we all feeding off each other. We all, like, learning from each other. What were your goals coming into this season? Was it to be the most dominant defensive lineman in the league? Was it, uh, obviously, winning football is always important, um, but... As you trained, what were what were your your goals? Um, to be honest, first wanted to win, and then second, I just think proving myself right. You know, proving that I deserve what I what I got. Um, 
proving that, you know, I'm not just going to settle for what I got, you know, is is more goals after, you know, you get your second contract that, you know, I want to hit. My goal is to to be legendary and I know having one year or two years is going to do that. I know I have to be consistent uh, through my years of play. There's another part of the, the legend of Dexter is your alter ego, Sexy Dexy. <laughs> what about this dance? Where did this dance come from, man? Uh, we used to dance a lot in college. Um, just do a whole bunch of silly stuff, like just whenever the music came on. And that was one of the dances we would do consistently. And uh, I think it was like my rookie year, we were playing the Patriots in a preseason game and the song was playing, I started doing it, stuff like that. And then Saquon was like, oh, that need to be a sack dance. So, I, so after that moment, I just made it a sack dance. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> the goals now for the last three weeks of the season, you talk about building the culture, right? Or helping continue to build a culture. Um, it's never easy when you're on a losing team because guys, like you said, guys can splinter. Um, but the goals for the next three games, is it to build for next year? Is it to finish strong and then start all over again? What, what is it now? Honestly, um, it's to finish strong. Um, you know, we got two out of three games is a team that, you know, we don't like too much. Right a division game like that, you got to go out there and just give it your all. And, you know, we still got things to prove as a team. We still can prove things as a team. Um, obviously, like you said, it's not going our way, but we know that we still have, you know, individual goals and we have uh, team goals that we can still hit. Well, I appreciate your time, man. Yes, sir. Appreciate you. Thank you. When we come back in the program, Paul Dottino and Sean O'Hara go head to head here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. Time for head to head. Here's Paul Dottino and Sean O'Hara. We got some great matchups in head to head this week as the Giants take on the Eagles. Sean, first we're going to go to Jalen Hurts against Bobby Okereke. Now, for all of these gaudy Hurts numbers, he's had some struggling moments this year. For example, in his last six games, Sean, he's only averaging just about 200 yards passing mm. per outing. That's not so yeah. great. He's also got 12 interceptions this year, which is tied for the fourth most in the league. But see, what the Giants are real concerned about is the fact that on the ground, he's third in the NFL with 14 rushing touchdowns, and he's second among quarterbacks with over 540 yards rushing, which means Bobby Okereke will be a very busy camper. He is so dangerous with his legs. He's got the 14 touchdown runs this year. When a quarterback is so much a part of the regular running game, and it's not so much scrambles, but it's designed, yeah. is that more difficult for you to deal with mentally to try to figure out your keys? Yeah, you got to just game plan and uh, see what formation tendencies they're giving you. Um, they do a lot of great stuff, whether it's zone read or uh, that you know lead quarterback draw with you know their center Jason Kelsey pulling around, lead blocking for him. So they got a lot of different ways to attack us. So we'll study up and be prepared. Bobby Okereke knows that it's not about the passing game that he's really got to worry about defending. It's the running game. And I think for Jalen Hurts, basically what he's saying is, why fly when you could drive? And it's not been through the arm that he's been making all that damage over the last couple of weeks. You actually look at it, he has just one touchdown pass in the last three games. So all of his damage has been on the ground. Now, you look at the total touchdowns, 33 total touchdowns. 14 of those have been rushing touchdowns. And 10 of those 14, Paul, have been from the one-yard line. So it's that tush-push, the brotherly shove, whatever the heck you want to call it. It's a quarterback sneak. Somebody's got to stop it. That's the challenge for Bobby Okereke. We saw in the Monday night game Bobby Wagner trying to jump over the pile and stop that. It's one of the toughest plays to defend. But really the challenge for Bobby Okereke, aside from defending Jalen Hurts as the passing quarterback, it's not just the quarterback sneaks, it's the quarterback design runs. How do you navigate that? So for Bobby Okereke, it's all about, look, all week long, he's got a mimic when Jalen Hurts is back there. The play action fake, the RPOs, the quarterback zone reads, those are definitely going to be a part of the wrinkle offense for the Eagles. So for Bobby, it's all about reading those keys. Now, Bobby Okereke has been awesome. He really he's, has. He's been phenomenal for us. Leads the team in tackles, 122 right there. The nine tackles for a loss lets you know about his instincts. 
He's got unbelievable ball skills. He understands where the plays are. It's almost like he's in the huddle sometimes. There was a great play against the Jets where he had tackle for a loss on a screen play. Just beautifully sniffed it out, snuck right behind the offensive lineman and made a huge tackle. This is really where he's made an impact. The takeaways, four forced fumbles to go along with two interceptions. So he's doing a great job punching that ball out. This is going to be a great matchup, more so in the run game than even yeah. the passing game. I'll give you a couple numbers about Okereke that emphasizes how great he's really been. First of all, he leads the National Football League and tackles on running plays mm. with 54. That in itself says a lot. How about the fact that the Giants' defense against quarterbacks this year have only allowed 169 yards rushing? That's the fourth best in the league. All right, we go to our next matchup, Reed Blankenship against Darren Waller. Blankenship, second-year pro, undrafted rookie free agent last year out of Middle Tennessee State, Sean. I don't know how in the world the Eagles found him, but they got themselves a winner right here. This is a fella who has great instincts and hits like a Mack truck. Uh, career high, 12 tackles earlier this year against New England, and he's second among NFL safeties with 10 passes defensed because he's got range, which means Waller's going to have to avoid him in that secondary. Reed Blankenship was an undrafted free agent last year, and now he's been starting for a team that's 10-4. and four. What do you see in him that has made him such a fast comer and become such an important part of Philly's defense? Um, versatility, uh, somebody that can uh, play in the post, play deep, uh, also uh, come down into the box, play um, in coverage against slot receivers, tight ends, uh, and it's physical as well. Uh, you know, coming for the ball every time. So I see a, a versatile safety. It seems like he's got that typical Philadelphia Eagles safety mentality who just wants to hit and crack people as often as he can. Yeah, just gritty, physical. They want to make it that kind of game. And uh, their whole team has that kind of mentality. And I feel like um, they're successful at doing it. Paul, I'm glad you mentioned the undrafted free agent. I'm always rooting for these guys, except for when they're wearing green jerseys. All right, Reed Blankenship, you mentioned his range. He has phenomenal range, and that's why you see him a lot. He's the deep safety. Sometimes he'll be lined up 20 to 25 yards deep, but yet he's still running downhill and making a play. So he's got great acceleration, great speed, and great range like you mentioned it. Now, you see the interception, the pass of defense. He's got a lot of pass breakups. He actually does a great job with his speed, with driving on the ball. He had an unbelievable pass breakup, big hit against Curtis Samo when he played Washington earlier on this season. And he does a great job of reading the quarterback and also seeing the receiver. If you're the receiver, I'm not looking at the receiver. Reed Blankenship does a great job looking at the quarterback and seeing the receiver out of his peripheral. And as soon as that quarterback's about to throw the ball, he drives on it. So that's something that, you know, if, if you're looking at your receiver, staring him down, Tom and DeVito's got to be very careful of Reed Blankenship because he will be aggressive. He will try to take that ball away. Now, you mentioned the fact that he's got all these pass breakups. You go back and you look, he's given up five touchdown passes on the season and all of them have been in the red zone so that's really where people like to attack him now you go back and you look at logan thomas who has very similar skills as darren waller he had a really nice touchdown catch against him down in the red zone where he basically just kind of ran a little slant so darren waller i know he's probably looking at that play and he's saying look i can run that all day long so quick slants we saw against new orleans we saw darren waller make a nice big play and that's the exact type of route that he's going to want to run against a guy like reed blankenship because even though Reed's got all that speed, he's not as big physically. I think those are the kind of pass plays that Darren Waller can protect the ball with his body by kind of keep shielding the ball from the defender with his body. That's where Darren Waller really excels. Yeah, now Philadelphia has given up six touchdown catches by tight ends this year, which is tied for the fifth most in the league. So I to like your it. point, I that's like where Waller may be able to do business. Remember, he came off that sore hamstring, missed a little bit over a month, and only played 42% of the snaps against the Saints, which was 26 plays on offense. I would expect him to have a bigger role this week. That'll do it for Head to Head this week. Let's go back to Bob. Carl, obviously we saw Darren Waller back in the lineup last week. Uh, the Eagles have had some issues in their secondary, especially the safety. Waller gives the Giants another weapon, and he had a big 29-yard catch against the Saints. He did, and what it really comes down to, Bob, is the guys up front. They've got to give the quarterback time to even make quick decisions. And so uh, if they can get the ball to Waller, he's going to impact the game tremendously. And Bobby Okereke against this Philadelphia team that's got a really good offensive line and they're really good at interior runs. Okereke and Micah McFadden are going to have to play big in this game. Well, they will. And here's the thing. They have now started to include the RPO again. They weren't running it earlier in the year. Now they're infusing it 
because they think that's going to help them in their playoff run. We're going to take a timeout when we come back over, under, and much more here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. We are set for today's game. Akers, a left-footed kicker, gets into the ball, and it's a good lining kick. Dixon will take it from his own four. Up to the 10, 15, breaks right 20, 25, 30. There goes Dixon to the outside. It's a foot race. Ron Dixon in midfield. Ron Dixon's going to score. 10, 5, touchdown. And Giant Stadium is ready to explode. Look at that. Big play by the Giants. Lawrence Taylor. Stepped up under pressure, and he's sucked by Michael Strahan. And there's the record, 133 and a half. And he does it with Lawrence Taylor in the house. McNabb back, under pressure. Gets sacked by Eumannura. New team record by Eumannura. Sack number six for Rossi, and the 12th of the ball game for the Giants. I'm not worthy. I am not worthy. Third and 11, drops back, lifts on, heaves it left for practical goals. He makes the catch for a touchdown, and the Giants have won it over. Manning back to throw, zips one left, caught by Cruz, runs out of a tackle for the 40, up to midfield, makes another man miss to the 45, down the left sideline, there goes Cruz, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Giants, 74 yards, what a play by Victor Cruz. McNabb again over center, Giants on a blitz, McNabb hit as he throws, swings it right, and the pass nearly hit, is intercepted by Seahorn, he's got it on the run, down the left sideline, cuts it at the 10, Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. It's time for this week's edition of Over Under. Here's Madeline Burke with Amani Toomer and Sean O'Hara. All right, time for a week 16 Over Under brought to you by the New York Lottery. Madeline Burke, Sean O'Hara, and Amani Toomer here to play the game. I'll throw out a number and we'll say if we think we're going to go over or under when the Giants face the Eagles on Christmas Day. Starting with you, Sean, over or under two and a half sacks for the Giants. All right, we're in the Christmas spirit here. I'm going to go ho, 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 over. <laughs> I'm going to take the over on the two and a half sacks. I think when you look at this Eagles offensive line, look, they're one of the best in the league right now. You, you go back to the Monday night game against Seattle, not one sack in the entire game, but I think the Giants are due. And I think when, you, when I look at sacks, it's not just from the defensive line. I think that the Giants are going to bring a lot of pressure, try to blitz Jalen Hurts. He looks a little bit off his game. Things aren't really functioning as they were earlier on in the season for them, so I think he's holding on the ball a lot longer. Give me Bobby Okereke. I don't think he has a sack on the season. I think he's got to get involved in it, and I definitely think the secondary, we're going to have some corner blitzes that can get home, so I'll take the over. All right, well, I'm going to be the Grinch because I feel like not only do, does the Eagles have the best offensive line in the league, like you said earlier, but also Jalen Hurts is a very effective with his feet, getting out of trouble, and I think he is one of the most difficult quarterbacks to sack in the NFL. So getting Jalen Hurts to the ground is going to be a, going to be a task for this Giants team. I'm going to go under. I do think that the Giants will be able to get to Jalen Hurts, will be able to sack the quarterback, but I think under two and a half sacks in the game. I like what you said, Sean, about you know coming from all areas. Last week, the only sack the Giants had was from Jason Pinnock yeah. right there. So I do think the Giants get home. I think two might be the sweet spot, so I'm taking the under on this one as well. All right, Imani, over or under five and a half total touchdowns combined between the Giants and Eagles. Well, after watching the Monday night game and the Eagles offense is having trouble putting the ball in the end zone, I'm going to say that both are going to go under because I think both of these offenses are struggling and uh, I just don't feel like they're going to click in this, this because both of the defenses are actually playing pretty well. Yeah, you're right. They Both defense playing well and, and both offenses kind of coming off of two struggles and struggling performances. I'm going to take the over on this because I think when you look at Philly, they, they are so good. They get the ball down on the one-yard line. They're unstoppable right now with this quarterback sneak. They don't kick a lot of field goals down in the red zone because of that. Um, I think the Giants are going to get right offensively. I think that they had a little bit of a clunker against the Saints, and I think there's going to be a, a lot of improvement there. I think Darren Waller has a better, a bigger game and a bigger impact. So I'll take the over. Five and a half, uh, you know, that's always tricky. But I think we can score six touchdowns bet amongst Bet the two teams. Between the two teams, we'll see if it happens, we'll, if it's a Christmas miracle. Because like we said, both teams have been struggling offensively. I'm taking the under as well. The Eagles offense hasn't scored more than 20 points in the last three weeks. They've been struggling. The Giants offense is kind of hitting their stride. Again, it's that tricky half because I feel like five is the sweet spot. I think five total touchdowns combined. All right, finally, Sean, over or under 45 rushing yards from Tommy DeVito. 
Give me, give me the over on this. I need more. I need more quarterback runs. Everybody is locked in on Saquon. Everybody's trying to stop Saquon in the run game and stuff 26. So there's been a couple times going back and looking at the film where Tommy, like the, he hands the ball off and there is nobody at home. Like there's all kinds of green pastures. So I think that there's no point in saving any of these gadget plays or quarterback runs. Like let, let's, you know, unload everything. Don't leave any gadget plays out there uncalled. Uh, I'll take the over. Tommy DeVito, we need all kinds of yards. I agree with you. I think I'm going to go with the over as well. I think Tommy, you know, just like you're saying, when you have that quarterback option and you see if Tommy DeVito were to pull it and run around the corner, there's so many opportunities. And Tommy DeVito is very, very athletic with that football. So some of the good runs he's had over these last four games, I think you're going to start to implement that more. And it also can open up the passing game, make the play action more viable when you know that the quarterback can run. Maybe you can take a person out of the secondary down to try and spy him like a lot of teams do with Jalen Hurts. I'm taking over as well. Overs across the board on this one because when the team's had some success with Tommy DeVito is when he has been decisive mm -hmm. and seeing, okay, see that pressure? Run the ball. Mm -hmm. And getting that rushing yardage total, I think it's absolutely going to go over 45 yards on Monday as the Giants take on the Eagles at Philadelphia Christmas Day, 4.30 p.m. That's a wrap for a week 16 over under brought to you by the New York Lottery. Let's send it back to Bob. Carl, one of the things that the Giants have to limit are the hits on the quarterback. Tommy DeVito was sacked seven times, and unlike some of the games in the past where maybe he was holding on to the ball too long, in the game against New Orleans, uh, of the seven, five of them had to be offensive line breakdowns or tight end breakdowns. Sure, and what has to happen also, Bob, is that they have to get ahead of the chains. They can't stay in third and longs because they're very predictable uh, types of plays. So, Yes, the offensive line has to hold up. And the thing about it, Philadelphia has four guys that can just get after it, and then they can also bring blitzers as well. All right, we're going to take a timeout. When we come back on the show, Carl Banks will hit the coach's tape with strategy here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford on Christmas Day. It's the Giants and Eagles in Philadelphia and time for strategy with Carl Banks. And Carl, you take a look at this Philadelphia team and they can attack you in so many ways. But the linchpin is A.J. Brown because he's physical, he's fast. He looks like a linebacker on the field. Yeah, and the key is, Bob, when you're playing a guy like A.J. Brown, number one, they're, they're excellent in the way they scheme the Philadelphia Eagles offense. But when you have a technique, you have to play it because he's a big physical guy. And we'll take a look here. Here he is down here at the bottom of the screen now. He's just playing, they're playing man coverage and there's a bump and run. Let's look at who gets bumped and who gets run. Corner steps up. He pushes off and see the separation he gets. And then here's the other part. When you're playing a robber, position, which is this guy here, you cannot take bad angles because all of these receivers have speed and they'll run right by you. So he can get in here, catch the ball. As a safety, you've got to find that intersect point and not overrun it, which the safety does here. And he almost has to run around his own guy to get there. And then you can see the speed and the physicality of A.J. Brown. Yeah, I mean, it costs 30 yards by taking a bad angle. Yeah. Jalen Hurts is very accurate with the football, and here's an example of a perfect throw. Perfect throw, but again, I will say to you, you have to play the proper technique. They see man coverage all the way. There's man here, man here, all the way across the board, Bob. But if he's going to be an outside technique, he's got to stay in that and commit to that outside technique because once they see the man coverage, let's see the type of play they run to create the advantage. So it's man coverage, I'll freeze it. So you've got guy here, and I'm going to bring this back just a little bit, just so that you can see. They're going to run him inside just to get back outside to beat the coverage. And if you're playing an outside technique, he just beat you because now there's no help here. This safety is too far away to get to where this ball is going to be thrown. So you've got to commit to your technique. Perfect ball placement, like you said. But it all starts with the fundamentals. They knew it was man coverage. They created spacing outside the numbers by running the outside receiver inside. But just look what Brown does. He fights to get back outside. He inside releases. 
all the way to the hash mark to catch the ball on the sideline. Very disciplined in what they're doing. Yeah. Now, if you're on the field before the game and you see A.J. Brown, you'd swear he's a linebacker. But then when you go on the field and you look at Devontae Smith, you sit there and you say to yourself, how does he not break? He, the, he is wispy thin, but he's phenomenal. He's phenomenal. He's fast and he's physical when he needs to be, Bob. Here he is in the, in the slot here. He's just a good strider, just a foot race. He just outruns nothing fancy there. But then just look at the, the difficulty. He's got great hand-eye coordination. But off the line of scrimmage, he just looks like he's not even running. And he runs right by the safety. It's a foot race, and you're never going to catch him because he's lightning fast. Yeah, and he doesn't drop a lot of passes either. No, he doesn't. So that's one look at Devontae Smith in action. We'll take a look at one more. Let's take a look here. He's going to be in the slot formation. Here, and th here you'll see the physicality, right? They're not afraid to put him in the slot. It gives them more flexibility. He runs a slant. Breaks one tackle, breaks two tackles. It takes four guys to get him down. Yeah, so that's, um, that's Devontae Smith in action. Uh, now we're going to go to the other side of the ball because Philadelphia's defense has caused the Giants fits, and they can really get after the quarterback, and they got a lot of ways of doing it. They do, Bob, but it starts one, two, three, four. You've got four core defensive linemen that can just get after, and they can beat you individually. And you can see here, you know who Hassan Reddick is. You know who Sweat is. Now you know who Carter is. This is just speed rush. But look at all the players that they have. And it's just one-on-one. -on -one. They bring an extra blitzer here. The back has to pick him up. The back misses. There are about four guys who can get to the quarterback here. So it's all about making sure that the communication is clear and everyone knows where they have to help out. But right now, if we stop it here, these are all one-on-one -on -one plays. Look at that. One-on-one, -on -one, you've got a guy here, you got a free guy here, and no one really does their job. You know, the amazing part is we just showed a play and Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham weren't even on the field. Yeah. So that's how deep they can go. Now here it is again. You've got your core four. Now they've, they've got five down linemen here. Here's a favorite. You're going to see a twist, and you're going to see a guy come through here. So the Giants, this has bedeviled them the entire season. They've got to know how to play this. Now here it is. Two guys out, one guy around. But knowing it's half the battle, then right. you've got to hold up because as we run this, two guys still come free. Brandon Graham getting the sack there. So the Giants are going to have to deal with that pressure, that speed on the other side of the ball. It's tall order. That strategy with Carl Banks when we come back above the numbers with Paul Dottino and Amani Tumor here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. In week three of their historic 2011 season, the Giants headed down the turnpike to Philadelphia for an NFC East battle against the Eagles in enemy territory. They have obviously a stout, talented football team. It was the dream team. It was the dream right? team, the dream right? Team. Mike Vick was over there, Namdi, Asante on the other side. Big Blue would take the early lead when Eli Manning connected with his newest target, Victor Cruz, and a star was born. Manning back to throw, zips one left, caught by Cruz, runs out of a tackle to the 40, up to midfield, makes another man miss to the 45, down the left sideline, there goes Cruz, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Giants, 74 yards. And the salsa was born then too. And he does the salsa. You know, Coach Sullivan was the one who actually told me to do it and was asking me to do something for my heritage and my culture. You know, that first catch up the sideline and I broke two tackles and made it up the sideline for a touchdown, I was like, I gotta do this joint now. Like, it's only right, it's only right. But in typical fashion, the rival Eagles would counter. And this LaShawn McCoy touchdown run helped give Philly a 16 to 14 lead heading into the fourth quarter. But as he would all season long, Eli Manning led the comeback, connecting with his young slot receiver once again for the go-ahead score. Deep ball toward the end zone, and it's caught for the touchdown by Cruz. He took it away from two defenders. What a play by Victor Cruz. And now everybody's headed to the exit, and the New York Giants with an upset on the road against Michael Vick and the Eagles. 
Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford Giants on Christmas in Philadelphia. Time for Above the Numbers with Paul Dettino and Amani Toomer. Okay, so we're going to go above the numbers for the Giants and the Eagles at the link this weekend. Amani, who's first? The first one up who has to play above the numbers is Isaiah Hodgins. This is a guy who came over from the Buffalo Bills last year and made an immediate impact by having four receiving touchdowns. And this year he has three, hasn't had the opportunities, but we see the big body, his ability to make plays, especially in the red zone, could be a big asset for the Giants this weekend going against the Philadelphia Eagles. He has to play above the numbers. Well, now, Hodgins had touchdown catches in consecutive games against New England and Green Bay. Didn't have one then against New Orleans. And he's also been yielding a lot of his snaps to Jalen Hyatt, yeah. the young rookie who has really been coming on for the Giants, showing his speed. In two years since he got to New York, Hodgins with 50 catches and only two drops. He's been very, yeah. very reliable, Amani, and that's important. Also, the Eagles have given up the second most touchdown passes in the league this year at 30. Mm. So this may be an opportunity for Hodgins to get into the end zone. I'm going to defense and Xavier McKinney. Now, last week against New Orleans, he was relatively quiet and only had four tackles. That's why he needs to go back above the numbers this week. He does have a career-high 94 tackles on the season. When the Giants had their three-game winning streak and they had 12 takeaways as a team, McKinney had a takeaway in every single one of those games, including an interception against New England. So you know he wants to get back to getting that ball out of the offense's hands. Absolutely. A sure attacker on the back field and they're going to have to make the open field tackles against the, some of the talented receivers that the, that the Eagles have. Also, watch out for him spying on Jalen Hurts to keep him in the pocket and not allow him to get those yards that he's gotten outside the pocket when he's running the football. Yeah, Hurts can burn you in so yeah. many ways. Okay, Amadi, who do you have below? Below the numbers. Here we go. Hassan Reddick. This is a guy who has 11 sacks this year. As of late, though, he hasn't been as productive. We want to keep him on that downward, downward spiral, even though he is an absolute playmaker and was a big reason why this Philadelphia Eagles team last year had so much success on the defense, pressuring quarterbacks that just haven't through their three-game losing streak. The pressure has not been there. Now, I will say this. He started off slow this year, Amani. In the first three Eagles games, he did not have a sack. Mm. He does have 11 over his last 11 games, although against Seattle, didn't have an awful lot of pressure. I want to point to a couple of numbers here, though. The 11 tackles for a loss, obviously still an impact player in the run game. He is second on the Eagles with 19 quarterback hits. So he may not get the sack, but he's yeah. certainly impacting the passer. Uh, in the playoff game last year against the Giants down at the link, he had five tackles, mm. a sack and a half, mm. and three quarterback hits. He's got to play below those numbers. Need to keep him quiet. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, that'll do it for this week. Let's go back to Bob. Carl, obviously um, the Giants are going to need production out of a lot of players, whether it's Isaiah Hodgins, Xavier McKinney is going to have a lot of pressure. They put a lot of heat on safeties with the way they can run their offense. And then you got to deal with Hassan Reddick, who's made a career of sacking Giants quarterbacks. Yeah, you got Sweat, you got Reddick, you got Carter. They have to hold up. I mean, you can't emphasize enough the job that this offensive line has to do communicating and this giving the quarterback time because if you can give the quarterback time there will be opportunities there will be opportunities but when there are opportunities they also have to make some plays above the x's and o's yes it's it really comes down to that there are drive starters that you can't drop there are shots that you can't drop these are the types of plays when you're playing a team the caliber of the philadelphia eagles Every play counts, so you got to make them count. When we come back on the program, we'll have three things with Madeline Burke and final thoughts on the Giants and Eagles on Christmas Day in Philadelphia here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford. Time for three things. Here's Madeline Burke. It's week 16 and the Giants are headed to Philadelphia to face the Eagles on Monday afternoon for a Christmas Day matchup. I'm Madeline Burke with three things you need to know. 
Eagles quarterback Jalen Hurts has 14 rushing touchdowns on the season, second only to Raheem Mostert. He's already exceeded his career high in a season. He had 13 in 2022 and has tied Cam Newton for the most rushing touchdowns by a quarterback in the NFL in a single season. Eagles running back Boston Scott has never played a game against the Giants in which he hasn't scored a touchdown. Scott has played nine games against the Giants and scored 11 touchdowns. And the Giants and Eagles have been playing each other since 1933. It's the second longest standing rivalry, second only to Washington. The Eagles lead the all-time series 93-88 with two ties. That's a wrap for three things you need to know for week 16. Let's send it back to Bob. Carl, obviously there's going to be a tall order for the Giants. They haven't won in Philadelphia since 2013. Michael Vick was the starting quarterback. Matt Barkley, who's on the Giants roster, came in. He was a rookie in the football game. It was 15-7. The Giants won. But they've also lost a lot of weird games down there. Long field goals, drop passes, crazy things that have happened. Um, obviously they're going to have to play a complete football game. What are some of the basic things that have to get accomplished? Listen, Bob, it is before we can even – discuss strategically where they have advantages, they've got to make sure the basics are covered. That's communicating on the offensive line, knowing who to block, when to block them. Um, defensively, you've got to make tackles, right? You've got, you can't blow assignments in coverage where a guy is running clear down the field. Make sure everybody is on the same page. And then your talented players will be able to, to shine. But if you're not doing the basics against a team like Philadelphia, you're going to find yourself chasing the scoreboard and it won't be pretty. Right, and do the basics, right? Because we, we saw it last week. The complexion of the game could have been dramatically different if you just catch a couple of first down passes, as yeah. an example. Because the Giants average through the first three quarters, the Giants average a half a yard of play on first down, mm -hmm. which means that you're in these long situations. Right, and you have these drive starters, these slants, these goals that are plays that are makeable. You just can't drop them because it immediately puts you behind on a good defense. And that, those are the things that you've got to have a sense of urgency about. Like when you're playing a, a top level team or even a team at your level, you immediately go down because you're going to play to their strengths if you are not doing the things that you're supposed to. Right, because then the pass rush can build sure. up. If the Giants have all those third and longs like they had last week, it makes it difficult. And then do some, make some plays above the X's and O's. Not every throw is going to be perfect. Um, not every play is going to be perfect. But sometimes you got to just do the extraordinary. Saquon Barkley on the sideline. one hand to catch, fully covered. Completely covered. Yeah. And they need more of those kind of efforts, which they had gotten in during the little winning streak, but didn't manifest itself against New Orleans. They're going to need all of that on Sunday sure. or Monday when they take on uh, Philadelphia and Christmas, where we'll get a chance to spend the day and yeah. enjoy those Philly pretzels at least. <laughs> there you go. Uh, hey, this week's game between the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles is brought to you by Bud Light. Easy to drink easy to enjoy. Make sure after the game, you check out Giants Post Game Live on MSG. Complete recap of the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles. So for Carl Banks, Coach Dable, and our entire crew, I'm Bob Papa, wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas, and thank you for joining us for this edition of the Coach Dable Show presented by Ford.